Whoa, hey. You stop that, whatever you're doing there, little cat. Here, you take him. Hey guys, today I'm here to talk about how to do the gas connections on your triggered spark gap. Uh, last video we talked about the electrical connections. Now we're gonna talk about hooking up the gas. So, I have two gas ports on here. They're identical, uh, quarter inch swage lock fittings. They already have the ferrules installed. I have my piece of tubing here, quarter inch outside diameter uh, nylon tubing. You can get it at McMaster Car or Home Depot or wherever. And I have a couple tools for cutting the tubing. You can see it looks like this is damaged, uh, this piece of tubing here, like uh, somebody chewed on it or something. The easy way uh, to fix this it's just to use a pair of uh, tubing or cable cutters, snip that off. A few seconds, I have a nice clean square cut. If you don't have this and uh, you're willing to take a little care about it, you can use a razor blade. Uh, lay the tubing on the table and ease the razor blade through the tubing, not crushing it. Gives me a great, uh, nice clean uh, end on that piece of tubing. Now, to make sure that the swage lock fitting doesn't crush this tubing, that the tubing can't pop out of it uh, when I pressurize it, uh, I need to use uh, one of these uh, barbed supports. This tubing, let's see, it should say what it is on here. Yeah, so it says quarter inch OD, 0 0.180 ID. So we're going to use a 0 0.180 uh, barbed support to go on the inside. So I grab one of these supports out of the baggie there, find the end that I just cleaned up, and I push my support into the tubing uh, until the little flange there contacts the end of the tubing. Now, I make sure that the nut on the swage lock fitting is loose. Uh, don't undo this. Uh, if you uh, unscrew these, uh, the ferrules will fall on the floor. You'll have to pick them up out of the dust, and it's just not worth it. All you got to do is push that tubing into the fitting so that it goes through the ferrules. And then I can start tightening down uh, on this nut. Now, it's a plastic fitting. So I can get a good seal almost just by tightening this with my fingers. The real question is, how much should I tighten this? Because, you know, I don't want to under tighten it. Uh, and when I immerse this in oil, have the thing start leaking. And I also don't want to over tighten it, maybe break this fitting here. Now, Swage Lock makes a gauge just for this. It's called a no-go gap gauge. Make them for every different size of tubing. And like the name sounds, you have the fitting correctly installed when the gauge will no longer go into the gap. Here you can see it goes into the gap easily. So I'm going to grab a 9 16 wrench, tighten that swage lock fitting there a little bit, and check it again with the no-go gap gauge. Ah, almost, just a little bit more there. And this will be a nice gas tight connection. Okay, no longer goes into the gap. If you don't have one of these gauges, you can use a ruler. Kind of a pain in the butt, but if you check there, make sure that the gap is uh, uh, 9 64ths or uh, just a little bit smaller. So, I have my quarter inch tubing connected. Uh, I, this can go to my pressure regulator, uh, hook up another piece of quarter inch tubing here, hook that up to a pressure sensor or a dump valve or uh, whatever else is required by my system. And there you go guys, you're ready to start making some pulses.